Hello again, this is another sculpting series. This time we're making low poly stylized stones. Going through the entire workflow for creating game assets. This time we'll be improving our skills and installing new sculpting brushes. Sculpting with Dine Topo on relative detail this time. Then baking and painting. In this particular episode we'll be installing the new brushes. Of course using those brushes and we'll be using the mask brush and sculpting our stone. Okay, so let's start by installing some brushes. The brush pack I'm using is from BlendSwap, and it's called ZBrush or Brushes Pack for Blender 3D. And you can see the types of image created there. So this was originally a ZBrush pack that someone's converted into 3D, so thanks to that person. I can't actually find their name on here, but thanks to that person. I'll put a link in the description for this. Obviously click download and leave a message saying thanks. And then we're back into Blender, and it's not a traditional add-on, so we just have to go File, Append. So we're taking the assets from that Blender file and bringing them into this one. So File, Append, Find Your Files. So there's the Z Brush Pack there. And we go into the Blender file, or Brushes, and into Brushes. So that's how you can bring brushes from different Blender scenes, or download them from people. And you can just click on the Brushes, these ones are all the normal ones, so I'm just going to go from here and select all these and press append from library. Now when I go into sculpt mode, click on the brushes, you can see I've got all my brushes in here and I'm using the wheel to go across them. Now you can, if we just quickly go back to the site, uh, there's a file here telling you how to install the brushes once and forever. I actually don't like doing that because it kind of gets in the way with all these brushes in your folder so I like to pick and choose for different projects and obviously I use the default brushes the most and they're all down the bottom here and you have to scroll I can't find any way of making this box bigger if anybody knows that'd be great let me know but for now just install them this once and then you can reinstall them every time you need them okay but before we go into sculpt mode we just need to resize our stone so let's go back into object mode and scale this into a stone shape. So I'm just scaling the Z and the Y so it's a nice sort of big thick stone like that. Before you go into sculpt mode you must reset with Control A the scale. If I don't, I go into sculpt mode, you get object has non-uniform scale and it will unpredictably sculpt <laughs> and your sculpting may be all over the place. So back into object mode, Control A, reset the scale. Also what I like to do is subdivide it so it's ready for sculpting. You can just go in and go straight to Dine Topo, but if you've subdivided it, then you get more predictable results. So a loop cut down the middle, and then I can, and now these are pretty much squares. That's what I'm going for. If I subdivide it without doing a loop cut, so W, subdivide, put up the subdivisions, you can see there's lots of oblongs. And if you were to do that with a bigger shape that's more complex, you get really tight topology in some areas. This is fine for this shape to be honest, but it's good to get in those habits of trying to create squares rather than oblongs. So let's go back over to sculpt mode and start playing with our brushes. So let's set up our Dine Topo. This time we're going to use a different workflow, so I've ticked Dine Topo. Last time we used constant detail, which means you'll get a constant detail across your mesh, depending on the resolution. The higher the number, the more detail. This time we're going to use relative detail. So if I zoom in, I'll have more detail than if I were zoomed out. So let's show this. I create some strokes, zoomed out, but if I zoom in and then go to edit mode, you can see there's more detail when I'm zoomed in. Now what you have to be careful of, back in sculpt mode, is that subdivide collapse means that when I zoom out again, it will go over it with the detail level relative to me being zoomed out so I will lose my detail. If you don't want to lose your detail when you zoom out, change that to subdivide edges. That means when I zoom in, create some detail, zoom out, I'm not losing the detail level there and it's not scrubbing over it. Okay, so let's undo that. Make sure I'm on subdivide edges and relative detail. Now usually I'm very keen on sculpting at a low detail level, then increasing it as I go into the fine details. This is a fairly easy sculpt so I'm going to go to a low detail to start with I'm going to go to 3 so the lower the pixel rate here the more detail you're going to get let's just test that out and what I'm looking for is that I can't too easily see the topology when I'm about this level so if I'm drawing 
that's not too bad, that's just what I want. That way I don't have to keep re-sculpting over areas. Okay then, let's take a look at our brushes and I'm going to start with the flatten brush. When you're using your tablet, you'll find that you won't have the middle mouse scroll, so you can use the up and down arrows. So I'm going up arrows to go through them. And here's the flatten brush. This is a cross between sort of flatten and the scrape P brush. And I'm gonna go around my edges and just flatten them out like this. I've got mirror turned on, just for the sake of a quick workflow. And I'm kind of doing a bevel basically. But obviously I could use the bevel tool, but I want it to be fairly random and stone-like, like a weathered stone. You can see because I was zoomed out a bit, I need to sharpen the detail up a bit there. And there we go, nice start, nice and simple. Remember to flatten out the corners so they look like they've been bumped into and weathered. Now I'm gonna use a different brush. I'm gonna use the crack brush. You can see why it's nice to download a set of brushes. All these brushes are made from the basic Blender brushes, so you can get there yourself, but it's just nice when someone else has done that work and you can get on with the artistic stuff. So I want to create a crack across here and maybe a different section of stone here. So I'm gonna to have to turn symmetry off for that so it doesn't appear on the other side because this is asymmetrical. And let's cut into our mesh with this brush. And you can see this is different from the pinch brush because it's not pulling my mesh together. So I'm making a nice deep groove here. And I'm keeping an eye on my detail level by thinking about how far I'm zoomed in and out. Okay, that's good. That looks pretty decent. What I want to do now is I want to edit this section slightly and just shift it over as if it's slightly fallen off. So what I'm going to do is use the mask brush. So let's scroll down with my arrow keys to the mask brush. And I'm gonna paint this area here. Anything that's black, you won't be able to edit. Hence why we use the mask brush to mask out areas that we don't want to affect. So I'm quickly going over this with the mask brush. You hold down control to get rid of anywhere you painted by accident. And I'm going all the way up to the edge here. And then I'll reduce my brush size with F to get that further detail. I don't think I have to be too precise at this moment. The mask brush is a very commonly used brush in order for you to isolate areas of your mesh. So now I can go into the grab brush and only affect this area. So let's make it nice and big and then just pull this in slightly as if it's just shifted across slightly and then pull this area out slightly. Hopefully you can see what I'm going for here. Let's try and flatten this out by hand a bit and this too. Okay, to edit your mask in terms of clearing it, you've got your mask options down here. They click on this menu and you've got, you can invert the mask so you can edit the rest of the shape or you can clear mask and you've got the Alt M and Control I shortcuts. Okay, this is looking okay. Need to tidy this up just a touch. So I'm using my arrow keys to go through the brushes, get back to my orb crack brush. Just make sure that's nicely indented there and smooth it out if you have to with the shift key. There might be areas that are a bit distorted because your mask wasn't clean. So you can just go through and chop that off again. And there we go, it looks like it's been broken off slightly. We can also go around creating some cracks. Might have to zoom in for a better detail level. Just resizing my brush to get the sort of pointiness bits. Okay, nice and straightforward. It's more like a tree branch at the moment, I'm not so happy with that. <laughs> no, I don't really like that one, so I'm gonna undo those cracks. I think it's okay from that point and just keep it a bit simpler. There. Let's try some other brushes out. So this orb slash brush. This has got an anchor stroke. So if I go to the stroke method, it's anchored. So you click and drag and pull it out like that. And that's not worked very well. Often for anchored strokes, when they're like that with the anchored method, sometimes it's best to turn Dine Topo off to get a good result. But it's still not working. Let's try that again with Dine Topo on. This time I'll up the strength a bit. Can you see Dine Topo is finding it hard to create the topology in this area and use the brush. So what it needs, if I go into edit mode now, you can see there's not much topology here or in the middle there. So it needs more topology around the place. There's a couple of ways of dealing with this. The best way, if you're in relative detail, 
is actually just to get a draw brush or clay strips or just the clay brush. I don't use the clay brush much so I'll use that. Bring the strength right down and then when I paint over it like that now I've created some topology and then the brushes should have an effect. Remember don't do this if you are in subdivide collapse because it will paint over especially if you're zoomed out to here because it will paint over your detail. So just be aware of that. So I'm just going over to create some detail. You can see my vertices and things going up there. Let's just check how that's doing in edit mode. Yep, nice lot of detail now. Be careful doing that though, going to edit mode if you've got lots of faces because it really slow down your machine. Now let's go back to our brush and when I resize it, you can actually see the mask that it's using. And let's use that tool again. There we go. Got a little chip there now. It's a little bit wonky though. You click and drag and then move your mouse around to reshape it. Now it's a bit too strong to be honest, so let's bring it back to where it was. I'm going to turn Dyn Topo off now, I should have enough topology to work with. Yes, I have. There we go, let's create a few chips around the place. And here I'm just trying out different brushes and see what they look like, so have a go at that. Experiment and get used to the different effects. Let's try these rocky brushes at a very low strength. I think they use the anchored brush again. Yes, they are. And then let's click and, click and drag. And you can see it's distorting my mesh very lightly. Hopefully you can see that, how that's just distorting the shape really slightly, giving it a rocky look. And I'm just clicking and dragging over it. All this time I've got Dian Topo turned off. I find it's much better with it turned off for anchored brushes but you must make sure you've got some detail to work with on your mesh. Okay, I'm gonna try a few of these for little spots, but I'm gonna use them. So these I think are anchored brushes as well. So let's have a look at that. So I've got enough, quite enough topology to work with there, but it looks a bit weird with a sort of growth coming out of it. But I was thinking of using this indented. So with hold control down and indent like that. That looks quite interesting. Might be a bit strong though, just a touch. Let's turn it down to about four. So now I'm just scattering them around and varying the strength and choosing slightly different brushes just for different effects. Looks a bit like cheese at the moment, so maybe we need a few more cracks in it. Remember to use Alt F regularly to zoom in. I think in hindsight I probably shouldn't have done so many cracks, so watch out for that in yours. Of course what I can do to sort those out is put on subdivide collapse, zoom out just a touch, get my clay brush to go over it with the topology, put the detail level up even. And at this point I can then smooth it out. If I tried to smooth it out before that, there was far too much detail in it and it wouldn't have worked. I'm trying to create a dent, so it looks kind of interesting. It's possibly looking a bit too real now rather than artistic at that point. So in the next episode, we'll be quickly retopologizing, then baking out our textures and painting.